Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to talk about the easiest way to run stable diffusion and I've prepared a Google Colab notebook for you and I'm going to walk you through some of the examples I have for text to image, image to image, upscaling as well as control net. So we're going to go through the code and I'm going to show you how it works. And basically if you're trying to play around with stable diffusion for free, this is the easiest way to do it. So I actually have a paid Google Colab account, but what you're going to want to do once you've downloaded this is choose a GPU and they have free GPUs. What you're going to want to do is change it to a T4 GPU instead of using the CPU. And so once you have the GPU enabled, you're going to want to install transformers for PyTorch uh, as well as some of these other libraries, which to be honest, aren't as important, but we use OpenCV uh, slash Python for some of the control net stuff. And we also need to install transformers, which is also from Hugging Face. So go ahead and install this and it should just take a couple of seconds. I'm gonna fast forward it till it's done downloading. Okay, it's successfully finished downloading. So let's go ahead and clear this. The first example I prepared is text to image, basically taking a text prompt and turning it into an image, which you should be very well familiar with. So the only thing we really need to do is import Torch and the Diffusers library. And so in this example, we're importing the Diffusion pipeline as well as a custom scheduler. And you don't need to import these, but I've included this to measure how long it takes to do some testing. And we're gonna also wanna render the image. So that's kind of what this is for. But let me walk you through this. This is how most of the pipelines are gonna look like. You're going to download a model from Hugging Face, and in this case, it's the Runway ML Stable Diffusion version 1.5. And basically what this does is it gets this model from Hugging Face and downloads it onto our computer. So I haven't run this before, but once we add this line of code, what it's going to do is it's going to create a directory called models here, and it's going to cache the download so that we don't have to keep going to Hugging Face and download it can all just be accessed locally. And these are some other optional uh, arguments I've included and commented out. This one you're probably interested in. The safety checker basically, you can turn this on and off if you want not safe for work content. So if you just do safety checker none, it's not gonna check for you know explicit content so you can use that in your app or whatever. And this, this line of code is, is important as well. This basically uses 16 float instead of 32, which basically means that the inference will run significantly faster. So this is just measuring how long it takes. And this part is important as well. We're basically just using the GPU to run the calculations that are required to generate this image. And see, I was testing out the not safe for work stuff, but let's do Native American chief. And then this should work. So this is the first time we're running this. So I'm just going to click this to run it. And what it should do is, so it has not cached it yet. So it's going to Hugging Face and it's downloading the checkpoint file, which is gonna be over a gigabit, gigabyte. So it's downloading all of this stuff, right? So it's gonna take probably around 30 seconds to download. And you can see that this is quite a bit. It's also loading the pipeline components as well. Okay, now it's actually doing the calculation part. Okay, this is the image you created. It's using the P and DM scheduler, and by default it has 50 steps included. So this is the first time we've run this, and you'll notice that now we have a folder called models here, and the model that we ran is going to be cached here. So next time it's going to be significantly faster. This took 37 seconds. Once we run this again, it's only going to take 12 seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you want to change the scheduler, you can add, you can comment in this line of code. And you're also going to need to include the, I think it's number of inference steps. And by default, it's 50, but you can change it to, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 to get good results, but to be much faster. The lower amount of steps, the faster it's going to be, but that's going to sacrifice some of the quality of the image. So let's go ahead and try this. So it's gonna be a lot faster. It's already loaded everything. And see that only took six seconds, which is super fast compared to the 37 seconds we got previously. So that's 
text image we're going to go to image to image now which is fairly straightforward basically we're just using a model that we're again getting from hugging face we're again using 16 floating point we're again caching we're again using CUDA and let me show you the image that I've included in here it's like a really poor quality angel that you can see here what it's going to do is it's going to turn this into an anime image similar to the style of what's that popular movie I don't watch anime but like if you've seen Spirited Away it's that type of style so that's what we have in here in the prompt and that's what this specific model from Hugging Face does it turns it into the spirited away type of animation style. So let me run this first and let me go, let me explain a little bit more about some of the parameters I've passed here. The only really important thing you need to worry about here is the strength parameter. It's between zero to one. If it's zero, if it's closer to zero, it's going to be more like the initial image you provide. But if it's, for, if it's closer to one, it's going to be further away from the image you provided. So once this is done downloading, and you can see that it's downloading in real time, I think it's in here. Yeah, it's gonna take a couple of minutes to download because it has to download like these huge files, right? But the next time we run it, everything will be cached. It will be significantly faster. So I'll just wait till we get the end result and fast forward. Okay, it's finished running, and you can see this is the image that we get. So it's pretty impressive compared to the input image that we provided it. So again, for this, all you have to do is use this code, provide an input image and a prompt, and you can make some very cool images. Okay, this next example is really straightforward and easy. I've included it here for completion. It's an upscaling pipeline. And what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna take a low resolution of an image and blow it up to a higher resolution image. So let me just download this first to open it. And I'll show you this. See, it's a very, small picture that is not very high resolution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow this up and make it higher resolution. So I've already downloaded it and ran it once, so it's cached, so it should be very quick. And the code here is very straightforward, so I won't go over it too much. So it's only gonna take a couple of seconds to run since we've already ran it. And you can see that the image of the cat is much bigger and higher resolution. So in this last example, I think you'll find interesting, we're gonna use ControlNet on Stable Diffusion XL, which is a much higher resolution and larger model. So basically what ControlNet allows you to do is to take one image, apply some prompts to it to turn it into a completely different image. So if you've seen those apps that turn sketches into architectural designs like Interior AI or any of those sort of apps, that's what they're doing underneath the hood. And so basically what this does is it's gonna take the Hugging Face logo, which I've downloaded here, and it's just a normal Hugging Face logo, and it's gonna turn it into this image here, which is the Hugging Face logo with some scenery around it. And so to do this, you can just use this code here. I'm just gonna briefly talk about the variable autoencoder component. So some guy uploaded this to Hugging Face and did all the hard work for this. All of the models that, that are based on stable diffusion, they're gonna use an auto encoder, which basically means that instead of using like the raw pixels, which in this case is 1024 by 1024, and in the case of the stable diffusion 1.5, it's 512 by 512. Instead of, the run, instead of running the calculations on all of those pixels, what it does instead is it reduces the number of pixels to a smaller amount so that it can uh, run the calculations faster. So let's say instead of 512 by 512, it will use the encoder to turn it into a smaller representation. So it will be 64 pixels by 64 pixels instead of the full width and height of the pixels because it's gonna just be it's going to just take much longer to calculate. So that's kind of what this component does. So you can just import it and pass it in through here. And other than that, it's about the same. And you can just run this. I've already run it once, so hopefully, hopefully it will not take seven minutes. Like the models are much larger, so it's going to take much longer to download. 
but I will just fast forward this until we get the result. All right, so now it's running inference and it's going through 50 out of 50 steps. So we'll see that the image we get is what we previously saw. And so this took much longer than the previous exams just because it's a much larger model. It took over two minutes to run in total, it looks like. So let's just wait for this result to show up. Okay, there we go. So it's about the same, a little bit different, but yeah. So I've just shown you some basic examples that you can use to get started with. The diffusers library from Hugging Face, you can actually do a lot more. You can also do text to audio and text to video. It's based on the same underlying technology of diffusers. So you can play around with those as well, but I think this should get you started. And the library is very flexible and you can change the different components and play around and experiment to see what you get. So hopefully this makes things a little bit clearer of how to run these popular uh, models. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to answer them. So yeah, thanks so much. Bye.